only have 20 words, so we, uh, you okay, don't need we'll much fabric. Just over and over. Yeah, again. yeah. Okay. Are you? Uh, is this video recording? Do you mind? No. No, I, I thought it was just a tape. Recording. Oh no, this will be fine. Oh, okay. This, this is video. So we were talking about the first Spy vs. Spy. Yes, Spy vs. Spy, my first memory of Mad Magazine. And it's many people's first memory of Mad Magazine. It's, it's easy, it's fun, and it came to us by accident. Antonio Prohius was a cartoonist, a political cartoonist in Cuba. And Castro came into power, and Antonio was making fun of him. And his name was literally on a death list. And he fled to the United States with just the clothes on his back. And he showed up at the mad offices with these two little characters. And they weren't quite spy yet, but they were going in that direction. Mm -hmm. And he worked with the editors. And we said, well, this would be a cute one-off. I wasn't there yet. This was Al Felstein and Nick Nagel. And uh, as with many things with mad, like the fold-in and uh, Monroe and Planetat, one-offs became, well, look, maybe we can do a second and a third. And, and Spy just had his 50th anniversary last year. So the first installment, I'm pretty sure, is in the Totally Mad. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to talk. I want to ask you about that in just a yeah, minute. Yeah, I think I picked that as a, one of the spy things to put in it. Great, great. But Mad has such an incredibly long, and it's like hard to say distinguished because it's such a strange <laughs> magazine. Yeah, you don't want to use the word distinguished with Mad. I know. It's like I learned that a long time ago. I think that my strange sense of humor is based on the fact that I lived and breathed Mad Magazine for like... Probably from the time I was 10 until I was about 20. And then I sort of went to the National Lampoon. But well, everybody went to the Lampoon, but, but now you're back to me. Where are the Lampoon guys now, huh? huh? That's right. Thank they're you. back at Thank Harvard. You. <laughs> but they're not sitting here talking to you. They are not sitting here talking to me. There you go. Only I was, I was talking to people, um, that, you know, and saying, do you remember Mad Magazine? You know, da, da da People that are my age, people that are my kids' age, and this is something I want to talk to you about. Um... But it's like, yeah, yeah, mad, great. Or, you know, what about you know, Cracked? And I'm like, yeah, Cracked was for the dummies. Mad was for the smart people. Yeah, yeah. So what is mad now? I mean, you've got Mad TV. we got Mad TV. We have a lot of foreign editions. We have a huge book publishing uh, pro program going on. It's really, and we have a daily blog. And we have, um, and we have a movie coming out, hopefully. Fairly soon, which I can't talk too much about, but tell me a little bit. Tell me a little bit. Spy versus spy. Really? Yes. Is it going to be animated or live? Live action, I believe. Yeah, it's in the. It's just starting out, and um, so it's really good. It's, it's sort of like an all-encompassing humor brand at this point, and and we're, we're growing even more and more. And the book Time Life came to us about the book, which we were surprised for, and it is our 60th anniversary, and we were sort of low king. It as with Mad, we don't really super promote ourselves in that way. And it's just been an enormously fun thing to do, but challenging because we added up how many pages of Mad there are, and it's over 26,000 pages since 1952. And the book is 256 pages. So what do you put in and what don't you put in? So we put in, first of all, we shrunk pages down so we can get more things in. So this is a type of book that, it's sort of like a smorgasbord. It's arranged by decade, and every cover is in it. And... Just fun stuff that hopefully will jog memories. And then if you want to go back and buy one of the other books that have full full decades and things like that. It also has every cover up to 500 and change. I think we cut it off at 512, something like that. And it also has... Bill Gaines picked out what he called the soul of Mad with me and Fellwood and the Nick Meglin. And they were just mad covers that we thought really were the essence of Mad. I remember that one. Sure. And we held on to them for a very long time. This one is the fun, the fun one. This was painted by J. Fred Muggs, the chimpanzee on the set yeah. of the Today Show, back in the 50s. And we used it as a cover of the magazine. So Bill, in his infinite wisdom, picked it as one. And I remember that one, too. This is one of my favorites. This, the original for this hung in my office for years. It was just sold. Something like fifty-three thousand wow. dollars, and the original Alfred, which was the first one I showed. For years, I hate my corn like that. <laughs> this this was sold, and it still holds the, the American record for the highest price ever paid for a single page of comic art. 
and uh, these are all in the book as well, tucked in the backs, and as we say, suitable for framing and or wrapping fish. That's really, yeah, for wrapping fish. So, who's your, who's your demographic? Who buys, who buys Mad Stuff? Is well, it? We, we write the magazine for ourselves. And Mad is written in such a way that if you're younger, there'll be sing, things in a few, and chances are you didn't throw your Mads out, you tuck them under your bed, and what happens is years later you go back and you read them again and you go, oh, wait a minute, now I get the sex joke they were making there. Oh, wait a minute, now I get the political reference they were making there. So it's really layered in. And we really ask a lot of our readers to, to truly get everything in mad. You have to know a lot about politics. You have to know about, it, about pop culture. You have to know a lot about history. And if you don't, you'll still get some stuff, but you're not going to get the hot entire package. So we were surprised at our demographic. We actually, the average age is 19 and the median age is 24. Really? Yeah, it's an older audience than we thought. Now, the TV show is starting to bring in younger readers. Right, right. Right. And for them, we've started a special book program that we sort of go through and we'll pick, we'll pick out all the political stuff so, because they don't really care about politics. And we might make the language a little softer and we might take out some of the sex jokes that are in there. And they're doing extremely well. So when you see the Cartoon Network logo on the book, that's pretty much your key that you can give this to a younger, a younger reader. That's great. That's great. I mean, I remember all of those, the TV spoofs. Right. Well, that's what we're hoping the book does. It jogs people's memories, yeah. and we'll bring them back to Med, bring them into the family, and maybe get your, your kids reading the magazine if they don't know about it, because, let's face it, if it isn't on electronics these days, it isn't a... Uh, I asked my children, I said, you know, I'm interviewing the, the editor of Mad Magazine, and it's like, what's, what's Mad Magazine? And it's like... Uh, don't break my heart here. No, seriously? I don't know what it is. Well, if they have an iPad, we have an app. You have, okay, they we, don't, I do. <laughs> you do, so you can get the, get, the, uh, get the app for 10 bucks. Well, the app is free and then a subscription is 10 bucks. And uh, you can show it to them on the screen and they'll look at it on the screen as opposed to on printed paper. That's great. So is this book out? Or this book will be out uh, October 30th and it's actually a hardcover book. This is a hand-bound edition that we had done just for the, for the con so we could talk to people and show it to them. But it'll be out October 30th. It'll be available everywhere from, uh, you know, booksellers to Amazon to Costco. That's so great. So it should, it should be a fun fun book. And they have a That's great. How did you get involved in that? How did you end up being the editor of this magazine? Very happenstance. I started writing for Mad when I was in grammar school. They didn't buy it, but I was writing for them. And probably when I got out of college, I made my first sale right about then. And then a second and a third. And one day I was up dri dropping off a script, and Nick Meglin, who had fished me out of the slush pile originally, said, have you ever considered working with other people's material? And working for Mad was something I never thought about because nobody had left in 24 years. I was the first person they hired in 24 years. So I became the first of the second generation, the people who grew up reading the magazine that actually started working. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came in. And then four years later, uh, Al Felstein retired, and Nick Meglin and I became co-editors. And then when Nick retired, I became sole editor. Wow. So here I am. So what's your first remembrance of Mad Magazine? It's the the odds the um, the Mod Squad, and it was called the Odd Squad. Yeah. And it was on the cover, and they had Alfred as Link, and they gave him the big the afro. afro. And I just remember seeing that and laughing and laughing and laughing. And you know, it was, it's what we call now a cheap Alfred substitution gag, but it still makes me laugh to this day. Some things just really, we've done Yoda as Alfred, and we've done many people as Alfred, but uh, it just always stuck with me. The most natural fit I've always thought was George Bush, George W. Bush. <laughs> we have a photo of him holding up an issue of the 20 dumbest people of the year, and he's one of the 20 dumbest. So you can't make stuff like that up. Uh, a bush holding it up? A bush holding it up. Oh, yeah. my We goodness. have photos, actually, of several presidents holding it up. We don't have Obama, which is surprising. But we have Clinton, we have Hillary Clinton, we have Bush, we have Jimmy Carter, we have uh, a lot of celebrities. And when you go to the Mad offices, we call it Celebrity Snaps, and there's just three bulletin boards filled with all the people holding up Mad over the years. And they're very, very nice. I mean, Clinton, the person who took the picture, said, Clinton, oh, my God, I grew up reading Mad. He said, me and my friend used to... Uh, pool our money together and go down to the store and buy an issue. And that's probably a story that's played out everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I remember I had, a, I had a choice between a subscription to Mad and 16. 
And you went for mad. And I went for mad. See that? You were the smart girl. I was. That, that, I, I would read mad and the X-Men comics. Because <laughs> I had a crush on Scott Summers. Well, you can't say X-Men in the DC booth. Because they will, this, they will just throw you right out. Oh. And, they, and they have tunes to do it. It's not pretty at all. Don't tell them I saw you. I, I, I won't. Yes. You know, you're recording this. It's <laughs> not off the record. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. The other thing I remember is the, the little teeny tiny drawings. Those are called marginals. And Sergio Aragonis is here. Is he? That's right. I He's read here. that. He's here. He has a booth over here, and he will be at the Mad Panel tomorrow. What uh, time is the Mad Panel? Two to three. Room nine. Oh, gosh. I'm going to be in the middle of press stuff. Oh. And it's a good panel. It's good. Yeah, it's like work, you know. We're going to do shtick. We're going to talk about the book. Uh, you laughs. I wish. I'm going to be across the street at the Hilton doing uh, press. And prizes, prizes for questions, Aww. including mad toilet paper. Oh, well. You, you, can't, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> How can you not do with mad toilet paper? Exactly. You know, you read it and then you use it. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, you know, mad has always been bathroom reading, right? <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, the ultimate bathroom book. You read it, you rip it out. <laughs> it's great. We do what we can. I love it. Well, thank you so much. This was so much fun. Absolutely. I hope you would get the book.